All right, today's video, we're talking about two different things. We're talking about a pulled pork, smoked pork butt, whatever you want to call it, on the new TMG hybrid pit. We have a ton of questions to go over. Uh, the first video that we launched was the my grandfather's 94th birthday. Um, the idea is we're going to walk you through it, uh, show you how to clean it and all that stuff, um, show you the inside of the guts. And then we're also going to use that pellet hopper, uh, pellet pro today to be able to finish this cook. The idea is we're going to start the uh, season this pork butt up. We're going to cook it maybe about four or five hours, let that uh, smoker start calming down, and then we're going to turn that pellet pro on and let it finish the job. That's the idea of this smoker. We have a seven pound pork butt. Nice looking fat cap. I typically don't score my fat anymore, but let's give it another try. So we're just gonna make hash marks. Two different rubs today. We're using that uh, all purpose Texas style rub. You guys know the drill can be found on pelletonpits.com. Very liberal coating, all sides. Presentation side down last, because we don't want to mess up that pretty bark. We're gonna use Q that for that barbecue flavor. Pork butt's done. Let's do a quick walk around while the charcoal is getting up the temp. Before our chimney of charcoal gets too hot, we have had a ton of questions about this new pit, how it operates, the inside of it, not just the outside, everything. So we're gonna try to do a quick in-depth overview of the new TMG hybrid. We've ran it several times already, so I'm gonna show you that under here, you've got your little uh, ashtray, just like you would a pellet ash dump or whatever. Bring this out. Coming up to the hot box. This is where we cooked our chickens. Take some of these out so you can see. Right here is our dampers. You know, obviously you can knock it down a little bit if you wanted to. That shows you to look on the inside. And actually, remove it completely and have straight live fire if you wanted to. And then put one of your grates back in. <clears throat> and now you could do steaks. You could do, you know, like anything, direct heat. You could do ribs. Probably a little hot right here for ribs. You can still stack your ribs up a little higher. Get that big coal bed, you get those logs on there and you can do a lot of creative things. You can put a pizza stone on there. So it just depends on how much fire you got. But just doing a quick walk around. On the back side, you've got two vents here. Typically we keep those open. Um, and then right here, we got like a little slide area for cold smoking. You got your top vent up here when you're running your reverse flow, obviously would keep it open. You can actually just shut this off if you wanted to and just use this hot box right here. You wouldn't have to worry about heating this up at all. Just open your vents a little bit more down there and then you control the vents as you need to, but then you can just run this separately. Getting into the guts. Oh. Here's our reverse flow plate. Not much ash in there at all, which is kind of good. Uh, I need to adjust my smoker. Underneath the pellet hopper is the drain for the grease. I've got a little stuff down there I can get out before we get started. Um, that's just the grease left over from the ribs, the brisket and all that stuff. I'll get that wiped out really quick. Other than that, I just wanna show you a quick overview of what it looks like on the inside. I know a lot of people are asking, how's it work? Where's the hopper? All that stuff. I know it might be hard to see, but there's a ball valve under there with an on and off switch. Um, and then you can just adjust it to where have the grease come out all the time or you can close it and have it pull up. It's really up to you. But there's where our grease is. I can empty that later. We got the inside cleaned out. Now we're just gonna put it back together. Pork butt's ready. We got the fire died down. We got that one log on there. We got our temps dialed in. Pretty close where we want them. It's not really gonna matter. Ooh. 
I'm putting my Chef's Temp Quad X Pro uh, in the grill today just to keep it monitoring the temps when we're doing some uh, other things. I've also got the meat probe in the pork as well. This is the fun of the hybrid. This is why I was created. The idea, what if you don't have time to stoke the logs? You still got meat on there. I'm gonna show you right now. We've let it die down just a little bit. Still got a cold bed going. We're gonna just keep that going just like that. I have specifically allowed this unit to drop in temp for a reason. If you go to turn your pellet pro on, let's say 250 and your smoker's running 270, it's going to notice that's at 270 and it's not going to kick on. So whatever temp that you want this to go on, this has to be lower. Okay. So if you want your pellet hopper at 300, it's going to go through a ton of pellets, but this can't be over 300. So I've allowed this to cool down. That's the whole idea. I'm going to show you a sneak peek at the port. The inside of the pork's roughly about 155 to 160 degrees. Give it a few seconds. It's reading the internal temperature of the grill. It's hard to see on camera, but to tell them because it's like flashing. Do you see it now? Nope. All right, we're roughly 223 degrees. So that means that I can go to, let's say mid which is about 270. So now we're gonna start the pellet hopper up the way a normal pellet smoker would go. I've got some Traeger uh, signature pellets in there already. Let me show you the bag. And really the only reason why I have these right now, it says maple and cherry, because I have hickory and cherry and oak mixed with my uh, cord of wood. I just thought the flavors might go together uh, she mentioned that in the video, this is flashing. I don't know how to record this. I'm not technology savvy, but this is not flashing. This is a straight number. So I don't know why there's a disconnect between the electronics. There we go. It looks like it's flashing, but it's a solid number. When you're talking about your uh, air vent, we're gonna keep it about halfway to three quarter or close, something like that. We could play around with that if we need to. And there we go. So the pellet smoker itself is actually caught on fire already it's heating up i know you can't see it but now it says 231 so we're looking good pork butt is just about ready to pull it's rocking about 175 to 180 degrees i was going to make a quick sauce i haven't done this method before i always like trying new things when we did our direct heat ribs i made a mop sauce that came out fantastic we mirrored the same mop sauce we did on our whole hog so this is the idea we have our aluminum foil pan a lot of people have recommended that when you do pork, instead of just wrapping it in aluminum foil to put it in a pan, add your flavorings to your pan and then wrap that up. And then when you break up your pork, it absorbs all that flavor. I'm down to try it. We have apple juice, apple cider vinegar, sugar, minced onion, granulated garlic, hot sauce, and some butter. Still rocking about that 250 mark with that pellet smoker going. This might be the first time you've actually seen the pork since we put it on. That's pretty. Back on the pit it goes. And we're going to take it off about 200 degrees or until it's probe tender. All right, pork butt has hit that 200 mark. I've checked it a couple times to be probe tender. Seems like it is. Not bad at all. So we're going to let it rest, come down to temp, and then we'll pull it. And just like that, we've let it rest about 145 degrees. I'm going to tell you what. 
As a man that barbecues as much as I do, it's hard to let it rest that long. But I promised myself I would, and we did. First peak, I haven't looked at it one time. Oh yeah, look at all that juice. New way to do it? New favorite way? Let's see. It has been a long time since I've had stick burner barbecue uh, pulled pork. Mmm. Mmm. That was like melting wow. your mouth. <laughs> this is good. Mmm. This is good. That au jus right there, that sauce. Mmm. Just add something to it. Mmm. 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 That? That sauce? Yeah. Mmm. Mm hmm And just like that, all that pork is shredded up. All that sauce is absorbed. Looking back, I probably could have taken the sauce out, then added just a little bit in. You learn as you go. But honestly, this is what I love about cooking. There's so many different methods, so many different ways. You just never know until you try it. I do know one thing. I wouldn't make it like this all the time, but this is damn good. Like this is way up there in flavor. Sometimes I could understand the neutral, depending on what palette you want to go with. Uh, but this right here with that mop sauce mixed up inside. Hmm. Man, that's good. Mm. That is so good. Mm. It's almost at the point to where you wouldn't even need a barbecue sauce. I could understand a little slaw, but it's so flavorful the way it is. And I'm not talking about over overpowered flavorful. You get the barkiness, you get the smokiness, you get the hot sauce, you get the vinegar. I mean, this is this is damn good pork. It's juicy. You put that yep. on a bun. <laughs> oh. All right, guys, there you go. So hopefully we did the walk around. We talked about that hybrid a little bit more. There's a lot more capabilities of it. Direct heat, um, just the pellet grill itself, and then obviously just use a stick burner. Super glad to have it. You know we like to break things in with a pulled pork. I was super excited to make it. Learned a lot about the pit. If you guys have any more questions, comment down below. We've got a ton of grills and a ton of ideas. So if it wasn't for you guys, we wouldn't be here. So just keep throwing the ideas back and hopefully we can keep creating them. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button. Pound the notification button. Share it with your friends. Peace. Mm. That is damn good pulled pork. That you put that on a bun. That is good, babe. Mm. Our, our little fake light here is not doing it justice. <laughs>